This is Twit. Tell us about our big test. What what were the high points? What were the low points? What does it all mean? Well, yeah, there was the third fully stacked test flight of Starship last week, March 14th, and it was the most successful to date, like by far of the three. You know, the like first one was last April. The second one was last November. That like first one, you know, it was a it was the first test flight. So it, there were a lot of problems, as you might expect, like the two stages of Starship, which is I guess we should explain what Starship is first, shouldn't we? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's yeah. my <laughs> next question. It's like, what yeah. is Starship? So. It's the it's the giant. And see, th- this kind of follows in from that long Mars tangent that we just had, right? Because because Starship is the giant rocket that SpaceX is developing to help humanity get to Mars and set up shop on Mars. That's like that like that's been Elon Musk's like kind of long held dream. That's he said repeatedly. That's why he started SpaceX more than 20 years ago was to make that like a feasible thing that, that we can do, you know, bring the cost of space flight down enough that we can actually launch enough missions there to set up a city and, and, and extend our footprint kind of beyond earth. So Starship after, after many incarnations um, is the vehicle that, that SpaceX thinks can make that happen. And it flew for the first time last April, like I was saying, it didn't do that well. That it's not unexpected for a first test flight. It has two stages. They failed it did, to separate. It, it didn't do that well. Is is nice, Mike speak? I think well, for it exploded it, two it minutes was, after liftoff. Four, Disassembled four. Four, four, four minutes after liftoff. Yeah, it okay. did. It, yeah, I mean, it did twice as well as Tarx says. But no, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, I saw it, that. That was amazing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you were there for it. Um, it was the first test flight of this giant rocket, biggest rocket ever built, most powerful ever built. It would have been shocking if it actually didn't blow up. But the but like the two stages didn't separate. It was tumbling and then they they actually they it 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 was detonated on purpose just for safety reasons. And then they made some changes and had to um get get the launch pad back in order because because the launch pad at Starbase in South Texas was damaged by that original launch. And once they got everything up and running in, in November. Like that one went better. They changed the, the 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 stage separation system. They changed it to a hot staging system, which means that that the upper stage engines start firing like before the two stages are fully separated. That worked. The like two stages separated. The plan was to send the giant upper stage spaceship, which is like 165 feet tall, send it partway around Earth, have it splash down in in the Pacific near Hawaii. That didn't happen. The but yeah, like the upper stage blew up about about eight minutes after launch and they they wanted to bring the first stage which is called super heavy this giant booster that's got 33 engines they wanted to bring it down for a splashdown in the gulf of mexico that didn't happen either it also blew up but that and so that that second flight was over after eight minutes and so we get to the third flight which was last week they had a different trajectory they march 14th yeah march 14th (laughs) They they like wanted to send the the like upper stage spacecraft in a different direction toward the Indian Ocean for a splash down there. They actually they and then they they still wanted to bring Super Heavy down in the Gulf of Mexico. They almost succeeded in getting Super Heavy down safely. Um, it got they they achieved they 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 did this got like a successful stage separation. Um, they did a boost back burn on Super Heavy, which was to orient it for landing. During the landing burn, it didn't go according to plan, and about like sixteen hundred feet above the Gulf of Mexico, they they actually lost super heavy. It didn't do its its landing, but still, it's pretty close. And with the upper stage, they got it to reach orbital velocity. They got it on the trajectory for a splashdown in the Gulf of, or in in the Indian Ocean, but it broke apart during reentry to Earth's atmosphere about yeah about forty nine minutes after launch. So. Yeah, they did a lot more. They even did a few little experiments during the on, on the second stage during the coast. Um, they actually opened its 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 like payload bay doors, which is where the like satellites will come out on an operational flight. They did like a propellant transfer demonstration, which will be really important for future Starship flights when they go to Earth orbit and they they're they're going to have to refuel for the trip to Mars or the Moon. They they did that, and apparently that went pretty well. Although we haven't heard a ton of details about that. So they they like did these little side experiments that seemed to go well and they just they just couldn't it 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 seemed like yeah like the upper stage was kind of it was rolling a little bit when it was coming into the atmosphere and that may have had something to do with why it didn't survive but um I'm sure they're already busy working on the the craft for the fourth flight which actually they've said they want to launch maybe in early May or so so we could see early another try soon May wow 
Well, well and, I guess it, they, they, sorry, just one quick thing. They never seem to do one of these launches without having at least one camera angle of Boca Chica that shows like three or four of these things lined up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know how much of that is set dressing and how much oh. of that is, okay, these are going oh. next. Oh, yeah, it is <laughs> not Tark set apparently dressing. does. <laughs> it is It is not. You well, drive but, out there. Yeah. No, but when I say that, I mean, you know, at the rate that they improve and upgrade the things and have to make changes, I don't know how many of those are actually going to fly. Do you? Yeah. 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 No, and I mean they 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 could theoretically make some changes after they've been partially constructed and stuff like that. Um but yeah, they are they're already looking toward the next toward the next test flight like just um, yeah, I mean right away because that's the whole SpaceX philosophy, right? You build, you right. fly and then yeah, and then you iterate based on how the flight went. So that's another thing to make clear is that when something blows up in flight or like whatever for SpaceX, it's not like a disaster like it would be right. for a NASA rocket where if if they are if if the the like giant NASA rocket that we could talk about in a bit, their new moon rocket, if if the space lost its some if yeah, if it blew up on its first flight, that would have been just a huge disaster. But well, if it blew up a second able, time, that'd be yeah. really bad. For yeah, yeah. It's like whoops. True. True. But um yeah, they they fully expect to to have problems on their first few test flights and then they they'll identify what caused those problems and then iron it out in future flights. That's just that's just how they work. Pe- people will compare starship to they, they need like a like a like a uh, a landmark to compare it to uh, spacex likes to say you know it's the same size as mecha godzilla or whatever uh, <laughs> but but they know what the the saturn five rockets were they knew you know how big they were they went to the moon and so just in terms of like numbers for for starship how big is it how does it rate to uh yeah uh, to saturn five and um uh, and, and I, and I guess, you know, it, you know, when you, when you say that, you know, that this one, you know, did what flew higher, flew faster, you know, it was this their big win? Because it feels like from everyone, what everyone was saying last, uh, last week, you know, but as, as we we're, as we we're recording this, um, that they turned some kind of corner reaching this kind of orbital speed milestone, if they didn't circle the entire planet, you know, once, you know, to make an actual orbit. Yeah, no, I, I mean, getting to, to orbital velocity was a really big milestone for the third flight. And I think, yeah, they, they, they have celebrated that probably rightly so. It's no small feat um, on the third test flight to, to notch that milestone. And yeah, I, I mean, it is like a, you know, like a nice marker to compare it to. People, people know about the Saturn V, or at least people of a certain age know about the Saturn V. That it was <laughs> that that was 365 or 363 feet tall was the Saturn V. The the kind of current version of Starship is 397 or kind of thereabouts, maybe about just, yeah, I mean, give or take a, yeah, you know, like a foot or two. It's, so it's, it's just so about, it's, a, it's a 30 story building taller than a, a Saturn five. It's is that huge. Right? Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just about 400 feet tall and or a three story um, building taller. Sorry. Yeah. And it's, it's way more power. Well, I mean, in terms of thrust at liftoff, which is one easy way to compare it, it's, um, it's about 16 point, 0.7 million pounds of of yeah of liftoff thrust for Starship, and that's like more than twice what the Saturn V could generate. So, and it's wh- it's it's the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built. Starship is so most rockets that we see are made out of like like super thin or whatever aluminum. You know, NASA paints them white, and uh, uh, or I guess NASA doesn't paint them at all, right? The SLS is like all orange and, <laughs> and white. <laughs> Yeah. But SpaceX made theirs out of stainless steel, so it's like a bright, shiny tin rocket. Uh, well, hearkening back to the to the original Atlas, right? I mean, is that is that why? I don't know. I mean, Mike, do you know why they picked uh, stainless yeah, steel? For yeah, yeah. Well, there there was a big conversation about this. You no, know, like like back in its original kind of incarnation, or what what they thought Starship was going to be, and back when it was called like the Mars Colonial Transporter, or or like the Interplanet, yeah or you know like the interplanetary transport system or the big falcon rocket it's had these various incarnations over the past decade or so the same basic rocket same basic idea giant rocket get people to mars um, <laughs> but when, but like when it when it, yeah when like when it was first conceived and in the early years they they thought they were going to build it out of out of like carbon kind of fiber composite stuff which is very high tech it's really good for space flight because it's strong and it's durable and it can deal with with like heating loads and stuff like that but um it's also really expensive 
And for SpaceX's vision of building tons and tons of these things and flying them a lot, I mean, especially testing them a lot when you're going to lose them. Um, I mean, they decided eventually about five years ago or so that they're going to go stainless steel because it's pretty common. It's pretty cheap. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it, it works like kind of well enough for spaceflight. They determine through their testing. And so that's that has ended up kind of saving them lots and lots of money, I would expect, like especially if you expect to be building dozens and dozens of these things, those those price point differences in the construction material really make a huge difference. Well, and, and I think that's a really good point. You know, if you've, I'm sure you've been down to Hawthorne to the headquarters there and you walk in there and it's like the General Motors of rockets, you know, there's second stages stacked up over here and neuter stages lined up over here and so forth. And if you're yeah. going to do this kind of assembly line thing that he's been trying to do, you probably want a material like that that's got well known characteristics and will do the job. I feel yeah. like I'm the only one here who has not been to the SpaceX rocket factory. So <laughs> Well, I think that's only fair that I've done something. And of course that's in the Ad Astro travel budget, right? Because it's fourteen dollars worth of gas from me. Um Mike, you know, one of the things that we talk about, you know, why why Starship is that it's supposed to be ultimately fast to build cheap to maintain, and of course, reflyable, which is the big thing that, that nobody else has mastered before SpaceX, and they haven't mastered it with Starship yet, but they they will, we think. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that and about uh, the Raptor engine and you know how that design of so many small engines burning methane is kind of all about reusability too. Yeah, well, that that's the big key for a Starship compared to the Saturn V, and we were talking about it how tall they are and how much thrust they have and all that stuff. But what's really important is, is obviously Starship is built to be fully reusable, rapidly reusable. I mean, they've, they've said that they, they want to refly both stages. Like, I mean, multiple times per, <clears throat> per day, theoretically. I mean, there's this vision, Elon Musk has set up this vision where he'll, they'll launch a Starship. This is, this is at some point in the future when it's operational, and the like super heavy booster will come back for a landing, you know, just 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 like the Falcon 9 boosters do. But their vision for Starship is for the giant booster to come back and actually land on the orbital pad or on, on the orbital launch mount. And it'll be caught by these giant kind of chopstick arms that the launch tower has. And then they can just refurbish it right there, reinspect it and fly it again, like within a day or so, or maybe even less. So that that's the kind of order of... of like of reusability that they're targeting with Starship, whereas you know Saturn V was a was a fly at once and it's done vehicle. Same same with the Space Launch System, which is which is the new NASA Moon rocket. Um, and yeah, they that's designed to make Mars like Mars settlement, Moon settlement, that sort of thing economically feasible. And but the, like the engines, it's 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 a different engine on Starship than they use on the Falcon 9 or the Falcon Heavy. Those are fueled by by like a kerosene kind of derivative RP one with with you know with like liquid oxygen as an aqueduzer um it, it, they've gone a different route with the raptor engines for starship that that still uses liquid oxygen but they but but the yeah the other component is is actually liquid methane and that was designed with mars in mind because like you can theoretically make methane on mars without too much difficulty from the atmosphere you know carbon dioxide is the dominant component of the martian atmosphere and you can do some chemical reactions and draw draw martian air in and get get yeah get methane out without too much difficulty so that was all part of the consideration for what the raptor engine is going to burn and why they settled on like liquid methane so you can have these little production fill yeah these these kind of like production facilities on mars where they're you know where they're making propellant for the starships that are landing there and then flying off again so that's that's all part of the picture it just seems weird. You know, I, I follow what you're saying, but it's not like it's hard to get hydrogen on Mars either. And yeah, but that works well as a fuel. Yeah, but but it's also, you know, hydrogen is such a small molecule and people who who were watching um, when when NASA kept trying to, to fly Artemis one, they kept having hydrogen leaks yeah. um, because that's that's the propellant for the space launch system. It's just harder to deal with, I think, for a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm no rocket engineer, but a lot of people that you talk to about it say, you know, hydrogen is, is pretty tricky. It's it just, I mean, leaks very, very easily. So everything has to just be perfect for it to all stay in place. And I mean, maybe that's a consideration too for, for SpaceX, why they went with, with this different fuel, but yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.